This is Dr. Carolyn. Today's video is about insertion sort. So insertion sort has three steps. First step is it starts with a, the sorted portion having just one number. And that's sorted. Then the next step is to insert the first number from the unsorted portion into the sorted portion by shifting the appropriate numbers down so that to make space for it. The third step is it repeats step two until there's no more numbers to sort. So it's a pretty simple algorithm and th that's really why we're studying it. Let's look at an example. Uh, first example will be for a random input. Let's take an initial array of seven, one, nine, five, and three and we've already done step one where that's a start with the sorted portion having the first element in it, whatever it is in there. And so in this case, seven is now in the sorted portion. So the sorted portion of the array is seven and, and that's sorted. And I've marked this with a, a vertical bar to indicate the separation between the sorted portion and the unsorted portion of the array. So let's go on to the next step. We're, we're going to take this first number in the unsorted portion, we're going to insert it into the sorted portion by shifting the numbers down that, uh, to make room for it. In this case, we had to shift 7 over. Okay, now we repeat. Um, now we're going to insert 9 into the sorted portion. That really only is keeping track of that the sorted portion grew by 1. But here now we're going to insert 5 into the sorted portion. So we need to shift 9 down and shift 7 down. Finally, we need to, we're going to put 3 into the sorted portion of the array and shift 9 down and then 7 down and then 5 down and that'll make room for 3. And notice now the sorted portion of the array is the entire array and there's no unsorted. So we're done. And that, that's our first example. It's illustrative to look at a best case here to understand what's going on with insertion sort. So the best case is that our initial array is actually already sorted. So again, we start with one in the sorted portion of the array. Now when we go to insert three into the sorted portion of the array, we just need to move, um, uh, update our indication of where the sorted portion is, which is, which is doing virtually nothing. And then same thing with 5. 5 is already sorted. We just need to um, move to keep track of where the sorted portion is. And then again with 7. And then we're all done. Very simple. There was no shifting down. Now let's look at a third case. What would be the worst case? What would be the initial array for the worst case? Well, you guessed it. It's going to be that we have a, an array in descending order and we're trying to put it in ascending order. Because each iteration here, as we increase the size of the sorted portion of the array, we'll have to shift all of the contents. Okay, so here we start with nine being in the sorted portion of the array, uh, indicated by the vertical bar. And then to insert seven, we have to shift nine down, shifting um, which is all of the contents of the sorted portion of the array. Now, if we go to the next iteration, we have to insert five, we have to shift nine down and then seven, and then we can put five in its correct place. The next iteration to put three into the correct place, we have to shift all of the contents of the sorted portion, and then finally put one in its place, we have to shift everything down. And so th that would be the worst case, the most number of steps that would be required. So let's look at some skeleton code for this. So we need to, for each, um, for each position in the array, uh, from the first one to the last one in the array, we need to step through and, and put it in the sorted portion. So we need to step through almost the entire array. Just, so we need to step through n minus 1 iterations here. And we'll make a copy of the item that we're going to insert into the sorted portion here because it's at I. Initially, it's, it's 1. And then we'll shift all the items down in the sorted portion of the array to make, spoon, make space for the item to insert, which may be none at all. So um, let's keep track of where um, the, 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 um, portion, the sorted portion starts from. And then while we haven't gone off the end of the array and 
what we're what we're looking at is larger than the item we're trying to insert then we're going to need to shift it down okay to take it from one spot down and then shift it down and then repeat going uh, further further and further down so this is nice because it doesn't do extra work we only shift what's appropriate and then once we've shifted it all down made space wherever we left off whether it be zero or whether it be not greater than then we put that item in that location okay now let's talk about some of the characteristics is it stable yes it is does it take extra space uh, no it's constant space again it's just the amount of space required for um, to the temporary variable for item to insert and, and loop indices so that's great so what about the big O here well um, we have an outer loop that iterates n minus 1 values and an inner loop that shifts oh and n divided by four items on average and n divided by two in the in the very worst case so we have inner loop and outer loop each one on the order of n so we're at n squared in the worst case is it is n squared again but in the best case the inner loop shifts zero items so it's adaptive and that happens in the very best case where the array is already sorted well that's it for this video on insertion sort